Hey, hey, that's still a. Yes, I don't know what's fascinating about it. Is, yeah. Well, it works. It, yeah. it, Absolutely. It, and it actually works best with these tools we're talking about. Um, because we're still seeing that over and over again, no matter what, people still respond. Word of mouth boosts everything else you do. Mm -hmm. This is why you want to choose an intuitive keyword to hashtag. Because if you choose one that's not intuitive, then it's not going to connect to your daily conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Let's use that website as a marketing tool. <laughs> Tell you what. We're going to market to do like you have this. Right? Let's see this thing. Yes. Okay. So, I'm Kyle Bailey, from Runner Marketing. I really, what we're doing today is a lot of what I do. I'm a strategist more than anything else. But because of my own journey in the process, I happen to have a lot of tactical tools. So I bring kind of a unique uh, set of skills to the table in that I can help you with your strategy, but always with strategic conversations, I'm keeping tactical tools uh, in mind. The conversation we had about the hashtags is, one, is a good example of that because we're really talking about a tactical execution of your brand strategy. But you can see in our conversation how that's connected directly to your strat uh, strategic position. And really, it's the center of your strategic position. So I call myself a content ninja, because I'm obviously not a real ninja. <laughs> and uh, But you I, like them a lot. Ninjas? You know ninjas. When I was a kid, man, mm -hmm. I was at you know, I tell. Bruce Lee and the whole Chuck Norris thing was going on. <laughs> and we didn't know they asked Chuck, Bruce, uh, Bruce Lee to slow down so they wouldn't make Chuck Norris look bad. We didn't know that until later. Uh, but yeah, it's about execution. It's about what you're able to execute. And that's what we're going to be talking about today is how to use your website as a marketing tool. <laughs> because a lot of people still, uh, the evolution of the website has come a long way, but people still think of it the same way it started out as, which I need to get a website up so I can tell people about my business and tell people about me and tell people about whatever else. That's a brochure idea. If you're going to put together a little trifold brochure, that's generally what's on most small business owners' websites. What we're going to talk today is how, about how to make your website really a very flexible, agile marketing tool. Okay, so to start out with, uh, the best way to start this is is how do you define your marketing? We touched on this a little bit last time with Bill, and it's about what do you actually believe? So a really good uh, uh, exercise, brain exercise for for all of us, not just for you. I do this all the time. If you find you said that's ridiculous, for instance, that's and which it is. Most of what happens on social media is ridiculous. To me. So objectively, it is ridiculous. But what, what to me, what would be a flag in my mind was that was my immediate response. Okay, so sometime when I've got my quiet time going on, I'm going to take kind of take this thought out and set it on a shelf and just break it open and look at it, and unpack it in my own self. How much of that is me reacting to what I don't like in this whole social media thing? How much of that is this? And just really let that all breathe because that is going to carry in through everything I do connected to that. And if I show that to the wrong person, there's a fundamental rule in life, especially in business. You show the wrong face to the, wrong, to the right customer at the right time, they'll never do business with you and they'll never tell you one. They'll always smile. They'll always shake your hand. They'll always be happy to see you. They will never do business with you. That's just the way people are. They don't like confrontation. They don't like rejection. And those two things go into, they see something, it's like, oh, I don't like that. But I don't want to tell them. You know? Now, it's, we can't, I can't allow myself to get my feelings wrapped up in that. I can't, it's hard to, it's really hard to. Because I want everybody to like me. I want all y'all to like me. I want to be very liked today. I don't want to tell you anything that's confrontational. I want you to just like. I want you to walk out of here and say that it was the greatest thing I've ever seen. I can't even believe it was that great. I want you to say stuff like that. But I realize that I have to stay on my core positions. And some people that's going to drive away, but that's okay. But you want them to leave because they weren't your ideal customer, not because you took a position that you didn't need to take. I didn't need to take, right? and thereby making them say, I'm not gonna do it, right? 
So a good fundamental position for your website and any marketing you do is I want the wrong customer to leave. I want them, I do. I don't want anybody talking to me but my right customer. Yes. So if you imagine your ideal scenario, your ideal scenario would be to have a thousand people sitting in a room, every one of them are primed and ready to buy from you. Don't you agree? Yes. yes. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah. That's what your website could do for you. If you hone your marketing, and your marketing comes from your thoughts, your marketing comes from what you believe, okay? You will never get past your own beliefs and fix your marketing. When that happens, you fire your whoever you've hired because you don't like what they're saying. It doesn't agree with what you believe. You fire them. I was talking to a buddy of mine yesterday. We're alliance partners on some projects. He got fired off a project, and he is literally one of the best paid search guys in the nation. This is no, this guy's no joke. He's like Bill Gates level on paid search. And these people fired him. And they're small change. They're, you know, they got a couple of stores in Houston and they fired him. And we were talking about that because both of us feel the same about each other. We both feel that we bring a lot of weight to the table, but we still get fired. Agencies get fired all the time. And half the time they get fired, it's because somebody in the building that was making decisions around a table like this got their ego involved, got something else involved other than what was the best thing for the client and what was the best thing for the campaign, mm -hmm. and they fired them. And you do the very same thing. We all do the very same thing, just on a much smaller scale. Mm -hmm. You know, We fire ideas mm -hmm. or we buy ideas, okay? So what I'm trying to tell you today is your website can function as a way to introduce people to ideas. So it's not about telling the story of your business and why you started, where you started. Those are all valuable things. But that's not what people are buying. So you have to figure out what they're buying. So one of the fundamental rules around everything I do is that people don't buy things or services or products. They buy states. They buy what? States. S-T-A-T-E-S. -E mm -hmm. States of being. Yes. States of being peaceful. States of being free from strife. States of being popular. States of being uh, more dexterous on the dance floor. States of being more secure in my finances. States of being better looking with more hair. I was speaking to myself. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was saying. <laughs> no shade November. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Speaking of states of being shaven, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I have a beard, so that's a dumb thing to say. Um, so how do you, so we're talking about definitions of framework. How do you define marketing? This is a very important thing to write down. Just write out of your head right now. Now, this is a good overall exercise. Anytime you feel yourself reacting to a word or a thought or a phrase, you should write that down. You should capture that, okay? So if Justin Bieber brings a thought out to you, that's a great example. It doesn't really do anything for your marketing unless your demo kind of relates to Justin Bieber. Now, if you resist Justin Bieber because he's been a jack wagon, now I think he says he's doing a better job now, I hope he is. I wish good things for him, not bad things. But I don't think anybody, including himself, is going to disagree with the fact that he's been a jack wagon. So if you react negatively to Justin Bieber, but your audience all likes Justin Bieber, you've got a disconnect there that you've got to find some way to bridge. That's a metaphor for all marketing, okay? So how do you define marketing? You should write that down, okay? Then... Marketing, this is the way I define it. Other people define it somewhat differently. One of the big things in our industry is the dividing line between sales and marketing. Uh, it really ranges all the way from there are very strict definitions and walls between the two, all the way over to they are always intertwined. I tend more on the intertwined side. I believe that, especially for the small business owner, your marketing should be such, uh, so clear and the path should be so well laid out that along the path of marketing, at any point, I can engage in sales. That, if I'm your prospect, I'm walking down the path of your marketing on your website, I can engage with you in sales at any point. Because your marketing really should always be wrapped around the problems you solve. That's really the, the core truth. <clears throat> your value proposition is about solving those problems. The easiest way, in my opinion, and I'm going to say that kind of stuff a lot today, and let me tell you why. Because there's, there's no end of people like me out there telling you what to do. <laughs> I 
and telling you how to define things and how things work. But what I like, I like simple definitions that are easy to deploy and easy for your mind to do something with. So when I say value proposition, that's another one you should probably write down. What do you think about that? What do you think about value proposition? What I like about value proposition is that, not to be too basic level, you're proposing a value. What's the value I'm proposing? Well, what is value? Value is what I'm going to do for you is worth more than the money in your pocket. And the bigger problem you solve, we talk about this a little bit later, the bigger problem you solve, the easier that sale is going to be. If you solve a small problem, first of all, you should consider changing occupations because you're selling uphill, right? But if you solve a big problem, the purchase process is going to be a lot easier because people have that pain. So a value proposition, how do you define your own website? So when you think of your website, what do you think of? And you should write that down. What, do you think, what should be the purpose of it? What's it? What should it do? What does it do? Those are really great definitions. What did you say value is? What value I'm going proposition? To do, uh, what, what does the word value mean? What I'm going to do is? Well, value means, just at a basic level, it means uh, that phone has value to me. That's, that's worth me taking money out of my pocket. Okay. That does something for me that is of a greater value to me than the money that's in my pocket. And I always like to say, I, I like my money being in my pocket. <laughs> it's comforting, it's warm, I work really hard to get it there. I'd like to keep it there. But, but there are comes things to, I want. <laughs> do what? There's things I want. And, you know, yes, <laughs> but even then, even like my favorite thing that I've ever bought is my television. Well, and my guitars too, but my guitars aren't high dollar guitars. But my television was a big purchase, biggest purchase other than cars I've ever made. And uh, so when I, you know, even then, it was, I was really excited, but man, when I laid that money down, there was a little bit of like, yeah. Yeah. okay, <laughs> even though I wanted it really bad. So I had the thing, but still it's like, okay. Um, so, so the flip right then is the value proposition. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, because, well, just taking that metaphor, you know, I observed my friends with them. I had seen them at sports bars, and then I go home and look at my TV. <laughs> Completely different experience, yeah. <laughs> you know. So I get that now. I have that experience that I wanted for a long time. I wasn't buying a pile of components and glass, right? I was buying an experience. That's what I was buying. And almost without exception, your customers are buying an experience. Almost without exception. There's very, very few exceptions to that. So, what do you think of your website? Now, this is big. What does your customer think of your website, your prospects? One of the most valuable things you can do is to lay out your marketing in front of prospects and go, what do you think of this? And do not color the process. Don't go, I've been working on this really hard and I want to uh, find out how I can do a better job of this and that. Don't, don't do that. The better thing to do is to anti-color it. Go, look, I've been working on all of this. i got you know, tunnel vision, horse blinder disease. I know there's faults in here, I need help finding them. That will get people to tell you no easier. Because people don't want to tell you no. Great example of this is I've got a friend of mine who uh, in Dallas who launched a business and he made this logo. And it's really bad. It's really bad. And so I said, um, while well, we're pretty blunt with each other, I said, uh, you know, that's really bad. He goes, no, it's not. I asked like 15 of my friends. I'm like, well, they're your friends. They don't want to tell you no. You got to go out to your prospects. So, who does dance? Somebody does dance? We both do. Okay, great. So, who's your main buyer? Probably moms, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, great. You go out, you get some moms, buy them coffee, and go, look, I need people to poke holes in this website. Tell us everything that's wrong. This is what's going to hurt our business, and we want to help people like you do. And then you should be laying out your experiences that you're trying to, to help them with. Help us understand what we need to do better. And then you can get into more of their own buying experience, but in this, in this particular metaphor, you want to uh, talk to them about the actual website because that's what's going to help you out. But get them to tell you your, uh, the holes in your system, not affirm you. You're not looking for information. The gap can tell you everything because a lot of times what this is going to do is going to open up different ideas to you that you didn't realize you were missing. 
and they're not going to be tactical, functional ideas. They're going to be concept ideas. That if they, a lot of times what will happen is someone will go, you know, I'm tired of going to websites like this, and I can't find X. And it never even occurred to you that X was missing. Contact is a big one. Um, how did your website look on mobile? This is huge. Uh, mobile's everything. And, uh, you know, statistically, over half of all search is on mobile. But if you know anything about statistics, that hides, that fact hides a lot of spikes. So you know that there's going to be demographical spikes where it's going to be far higher. Okay? And moms are one of these because they do a lot of their search while they're waiting for their kids, you know, at the whatever. At the, I'll tell you one thing, man. I don't have kids, and there have been some eye-opening experiences in the last couple of years. I asked my friend. I, we reconnected after 10 years or so, and he has a 5-year, year 6-year-old, something like that. And uh, well, I don't, you know. It's a big difference, 5 and 6. I know it doesn't sound like it. Not, yes. not from my height. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know from the kid it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about that the other day because, uh, well, it was like quasi dating experience. We almost got to the dating stage, uh, and she was like 34. I'm 46. Mm -hmm. I was thinking how big of a difference that is from now to like if I was 25. That's a completely different discussion, mm -hmm. like a jailable discussion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, but you know, the older you get, that yeah, but yeah, yeah, five and six. So. Uh, I was like, hey, let's go do something on Saturday. I can't do it on Saturday. Why not? Well, we have swimming, then we have this, then we have this, and we have a play date. I was like, good Lord. My, our parents used to just turn us out and lock the door. <laughs> go somewhere, yeah. be back here at eight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and you, a lot, say it again. Life is way different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you understand, understand, you guys understand this way better than I do. So that should be built into your website. You should be talking about that because that's one of the primary things in their life is how they are walking through this journey of parenting and this whole subset of the whole freaking circus of kids' activities and waiting on this and going to that, you know. Well, that's why it's a convenience because our parents don't have to take their kids to dance or gymnastics class because we are already on site at their daycare or school. And if they want a free hour to go do whatever they need to do, they sign them up, you know, so that's yeah. a big thing. That's yeah. a big That's thing. huge. That's yeah. awesome. So that part, I don't see that. But you don't see what? That that the parents, you know, um, are on their thing trying to take their that kid to soccer practice, swim practice, play. No, 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 they're looking that. for your solution. They're wow, standing in line somewhere, waiting somewhere, yes. right. looking for dance, and then they find out they don't have to do another wait in line thing. Right. Right. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm yeah. So how your yeah. website looks on mobile and then how that concept looks on mobile okay. are huge. Can they contact you? Is it one click call? Is your logo uh, scalable? That's a big one because a lot of people's logos aren't scalable. So when, when they go into mobile, they're, it's blurry. So all that work you did on your branding and all that money you pay for your logo is wasted because it won't scale to mobile. Okay. Your, your pictures, all, they we're getting into mobile, but it's really important. <laughs> your pictures should all look great on Instagram. Yes. Because Instagram is sized for mobile screens. So it's a really easy way. Just You can actually go and copy your photo from your website. If you don't have it easily stored somewhere, you can just go pull it down and copy it from your website and then share it on Instagram. And how does it look? If it looks flat, like landscape size, it's bad. You need to resize it. Um, you should also have some words on your images. And here's why. Once you get your SEO in shape, then your, in, your images are going to start indexing. And what this means is Google's going to return your actual images for search. So which one of your keywords? Teach kids dancing, maybe? Mm. I don't know what the previous discussion was, but creative, oh, developmental, and positive. A lot of people don't use those words. There you go. Ding, ding, ding. That's exactly what you just, you, we teach in this class. You're about to say exactly what I said. You have to, you have to think of it from what they search. So once you figure that out, Thanks, I think... Class. Dance class for kids. Dance class for kids. That's going to be a big one. So uh, search that, and you're going to have images return on that. And so it should. But what you'll see is, in most cases, small business owners don't put any words on the image. So you get these image returns that have no visual value, other than there's a kid there dancing. Okay. But there's no tie back to like dan on-site dance class. Mm. Are these the images that you get when you do a Google search and you mm -hmm. click on image? Is that what you're talking about? Well, they also return on the main search page too. So 
So it's not just on images. So what will happen is you'll have the full search page, paid search, then a lot of times, especially in weaker demos where they don't have strong map returns, uh, usually you're gonna have one organic, then a map. But if you don't have strong map returns for that <laughs> keyword, it'll go straight to images and videos. It'll just shoot out a list of mm -hmm. images. So it's a very, very, very underused um, element of SEO. You were gonna say something? No, I was just wondering <clears throat> if it's that thing where it says more images of dance class. <laughs> Those things where you know there's a zillion pictures of different dance, or if you have more images of about um, Marina, is that what you're talking about? Right. More images? <clears throat> I don't know. Right. I think, yeah, that it shows up when you search that, that little strip. But how do you tie that picture to any to your concept? Well, just like are you literally saying you could click on the picture and it would take you to the to your website? The first place it's gonna take you is to Google Images. It's gonna take right. you to a full set, mm -hmm. but it's gonna take you to that image. So yeah, then at that point, when you click the image again, it takes you to the website. And so you need to do something kind of in the guts of your website, no. though. No, on that no it's on that page. It's okay, gotcha, page. gotcha. Yeah, yeah. It'd be a tag, the, yeah. You want to alt text, this is getting attacked yeah. once ago, but you want to alt text the image. Mm -hmm. But the best thing to do is to have some words on the image. Yeah, what do you mean? Know, you mean words literally words. like where yeah. you see the image and then like words. Words. Like, like that? Yeah. Okay. Like that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Like so if that was pictures of the sunset yeah. or whatever, sunrise. Now this is not alt text. Right. It has a sunrise picture and you go say, oh, we have this picture. Yeah, yeah. pictures of sunrise. That, pictures of a cliff with a dude almost falling off. That's it. So you put, mm -hmm. you said alt text and then you said put it on there. Do you do both or? Yes. Yeah. You do both. Alt text is behind us. You can never see alt text. Oh, gotcha. Not without a code Unless reader. your picture doesn't show up and then that's what, isn't that what happens with Google? Like if the oh, if the link broke or something, up, yeah. then it, yeah. it shows yeah. you what you But got. that's a much bigger problem. It's a much bigger problem not to have the image there. No, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Just, sometimes, just, sometimes, yeah. Depends on how the website's set up and whatever. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's go. So you, getting back to this idea, the gap between what you think of your website and what your customer thinks of your website, it can tell you times. That is a very educational process. And I can guarantee you almost that there's a gap between what you think and what they think. Because how do we think of our business? We think of it from the inside out, the guts of it, all the sweat and labor. And combined with kind of the daily problems that you encounter running your business, that mixes in with your stuff, so it colors your process. Your customers don't think about that. Mm -hmm. My customers don't think about the fact that I had a hard time hooking up to the HDMI here today, mm -hmm. which is very irritating for me. I don't like that. I want to come in and ding, 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 it's done. Because I look, I look cool and professional. It doesn't look professional, I'm like, I can't find that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a little irritant to me, but I, through my own discipline process, there's a hard wall in my mind that never transfers to the customer. I'm thinking about how you guys are viewing me today and what you need out of this, not what I need out of it. I only expose that to show you an yeah. example of the process, okay? Never, ever gripe on social media about the problems in your business. Mm -hmm. I'm, ever. Any gripe you about anything. You see that a lot? <laughs> like, it's incredible. Oh, wow, it's that's incredibly bad. incredibly common. That's unprofessional. The only thing, well, <laughs> yeah. now there is one little caveat to that, okay. which is every once in a while let your hair down. I don't have enough to let down, yeah. but metaphorically let your hair down and say, man, you know, I'm struggling today. I just got to tell you, it's yeah. been a rough couple of days uh, because that tells people you're real. Yeah. One of the shocking things to me, I'm the oldest of eight kids, and I mean, yeah. <laughs> That's shocking. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you know, there's definitely been some hard times in my life, okay? Um, I, there's a lot of people that have, have it harder. I don't think about it like that. Yeah. But what has happened in my own processes is that I've developed a, a compartmentalization process where those things stay over here. I don't bring those things into the light unless it's with my close inner circle. I have people I talk to about those things. Mm -hmm. Then I have this. This is all about this. This is not about any of that. And then I had somebody approach me one day, and they said, you know, one of the hard things that I, I find in dealing with you is you never admit any weaknesses. And that really, it, it's, I'm still thinking about that. It's still, I'm still having to process that. Um, and then I look around at people and I see them do this and it is effective for them. Now, the hard thing is it's such a personal thing and a real thing. I have a hard time doing that just as a tactic. Even though I know I need to do it. I have a hard time doing that only because I want people to see me as real, 
right? That's going to be like me shaving into a mohawk or something because somebody told me that's a better marketing position. You know, the, the mohawk marketing. Mm -hmm. I know. <laughs> um, but that, that, that's a really great example of that. But in most cases, never drag. I'm thinking of one particular case, and I'm not going to name the person, but uh, every week, it's some huge gripe session. I mean, it's a post on Facebook this long about all the problems, the customers, they hate the customers, and all this stuff. And I'm just like, I personally, I will never buy from you. Not you. I never, it's never gonna happen. Right. Or I've seen people sure say like, I did three proposals, you know, yeah. and oh, I haven't heard back, or, you know, I'm like, don't yeah, say that. Like, like, don't don't tell, tell us. us. Like, you know. Yeah. 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 Even if it's on their personal page, you know, yeah. you yeah. can't yeah. separate, yeah. Yeah. so. Yeah. So let's give you a little more tactical list of five. Uh, I put this as a title because it's a great concept for a small business when you're producing content. It's an easy thing to do. If you want a blogging trick, if you, if you have trouble blogging, like you sit down to write and it's like nothing comes out, really easy thing to do. Give me a topic you would blog on. Uh, water, wastewater lines in the city of Austin. <laughs> like, I mean, seriously, you yeah. want to talk about my issue and blogging? Yeah. I have no idea what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> It's, get your point. <laughs> yeah, like, get your point. Yeah. Get your point. yeah. Okay. Got it. Get, tell me five things about wastewater lines in Austin. Yeah. No, literally. Tell me five things. I don't know. This is what I'm talking about. I'm oh, I thought this was part learning. of your business. I, well, this she's is, learning. I'm right? learning, but that's why I'm here for marketing to figure all this stuff out so then I can go back and okay, talk well, to the this way, then. Let's do it this what's way. going on. This, that, this, 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 here's a good way to do this if you awesome. don't know about something. Um, <laughs> five things I'd like to know about wastewater in Austin. Awesome. Okay, let's start with one of those. Just what's one thing you'd like to know about, anybody, let's all do this. One thing you'd like to know about wastewater in Austin. Purity. Purity, purity of water we're drinking. So write that down. What's another thing? Why it's a problem. Mm, the meter that's reader. That's a great question. <laughs> ah, the meter, the meter reader. reader. They just said it's a big readers. deal. Meter okay, readers. are the meter readers accurate? Is that what you're talking about? Mm -hmm. Accuracy of meter readers. No. Mm -hmm. Okay, so are you writing that one down? Mm -hmm. It's scary. Okay. So you have, you should have three now, right? Mm-hmm. Okay.